In this lecture, we will talk about the realistic capacitor model. From previous lectures, we understand the importance of the realistic capacitor model in the high-frequency applications. This slide shows you a real-world model of a capacitor, including ESR for equivalent series resistor, ESL for equivalent series inductance, and the capacitor in parallel with a leakage resistor, R leak. The total impedance Z has three parts in series. Capacitor impedance Z sub C in parallel with leakage resistor R leak, plus impedance of ESL and the impedance of ESR. Since these three parts are in series, we can simplify the equation using magnitude asymptotes. In other words, we only care about the largest part and ignore others. Usually, our leak is so large compared to the impedance of capacitor, therefore our leak can be ignored. The largest part will dominate in the total impedance Z. At low frequency, where S variable is small, and capacitor impedance 1 over Sc will be the largest. At high frequency, Sl will be the most dominant part, since S is much larger in high frequency. Now we have two magnitude asymptotes. The frequency at the intersection is called the corner frequency or resonant frequency, annotated as F0 or F0. At frequency F0, the impedance of inductor and capacitor will cancel out. Their magnitude is called R0, which is the characteristic impedance. Usually ESR is smaller than R0. At F0, the impedance of ESL and C have same magnitude but opposite phase. They have 180 degree phase difference. Therefore, they cancel out each other and only ESR are left in the impedance. As a result, ESR will determine the impedance at F0, which introduces some negative peaking on the magnitude. Again, R0 is called the characteristic impedance. The corner frequency F0 is 1 over 2 pi square root of L times C. When the frequency is below F0, the capacitor is capacitive. That means it is working as a good capacitor with some ESR. However, when the frequency is higher than F0, the ESL will dominate in the impedance graph and uh, the capacitor becomes inductive. At F0, L and C, they are cancel out each other on the impedance. We only have ESR left. This slide talks about the impedance, resistance, and the reactance of a realistic capacitor. If we write the impedance in the frequency domain using S variable, we can obtain a complex number with real part and the imaginary part. The equation is Z equals to R plus Jx. R is the resistance that does not depend on the frequency. Reactance X is the imaginary part of the impedance. Well, X is the reactance that depends on frequency and is a function of S variable. Now let's talk about capacitor first. A capacitor is a purely reactive impedance that is inversely proportional to the signal frequency. Capacitive reactance is expressed as x sub c equals to 1 over omega c with a minus sign. The minus sign indicates that the imaginary part of the impedance is negative. The other component is an inductor corresponding to the inductive reactance x sub l which is proportional to the signal frequency and the inductance L. Therefore, the total reactance is x equals to x sub L plus x sub C. Note that x sub C is negative. On the right-hand side, we can express all the impedance, reactance, resistance in the complex plane. Based on this paragraph, we can define more parameters. Now let's have an introduction about some specific parameters associated with the capacitor, such as dissipation factor, dF, power factor, pF, and the quality factor, q. Dissipation factor is a measure of the losses in a capacitor under AC application. In the plot, we can see there are two angles. The first one is called phase angle, theta, which is the angle of z from the real axis. Another one is the loss angle, delta, that is the angle between z and negative imaginary axis. For practical applications, the operating frequency of the capacitor should be well below the corner frequency F0. 
Therefore, we can say x sub l is negligible compared to x sub c, so that the mathematical equations become much easier to use. Based on that, dissipation factor is defined as tangent of delta equals to ESR over the magnitude of x sub c. Q factor is tangent of theta, which is 1 over df. Finally, the power factor is cosine of theta equals to ESR over the magnitude of z. Summary of equations. For simplicity, ESL is expressed as L, and ESR is written as R. So impedance equation is expressed as a function of S variable for frequency analysis. This is often preferred in practical design. In addition, the time domain differential equation is shown here as well. Once you fully understand these two equations, you will be comfortable with the practical design steps, such as capacitor selection, going through datasheet, and understanding the specs. Power dissipation is calculated as the capacitor RMS current squared times the ESR. The power dissipation is directly related to the temperature rise over the capacitor. For example, if the ESR of a capacitor is very large, the allowed RMS ripple current must be small so that the overall power dissipation is within the limit. Generally, that means a capacitor with large ESR cannot handle large ripple current. Oftentimes, ESL can be neglected since the circuit is operating way below the self-resonant frequency. Therefore, ESL impedance will be too small to consider. This can simplify the design procedure and reduce the simulation model complexity. As you can see here, most of the time you can use just ESR or a resistor in series with a capacitor to complete the capacitor model. Here the impedance equation for this model. Finally, we can see the impedance is R plus 1 over SC. By using some algebra, we can simplify the equation as a pole and zero as shown here. By using some algebra, the impedance can be simplified as 1 inverted 0 at omega 0. Or you can put it in a way that shows 1 origin pole and 1 0. Again, considering ESR only is the most used model for a capacitor. Now let's run some LT spy simulation to study the impedance of a realistic capacitor, including ESL, ESR, and the capacitor. There are two ways to complete the capacitor model in LT spice. First, we put external parameters. As shown in this schematic, capacitor is given as 0.1 microfarad in series with a resistor R1, which is 10 milli ohm, and the inductor 10 nano Henry. So these two actual components are explicitly added in the schematic, which is very easy to understand. In this case, ESR is assumed to be a constant resistance for simplicity reason. However, in the real world, ESR usually changes with frequency. This method is my personal preference to add ESR and ESL explicitly on the schematic because it is easy to change and better for review. If we run the AC analysis, we can see the body plot of total impedance. The solid line is the magnitude. The dashed line is the phase. The corner frequency is about 5 MHz. When the frequency is below F0, you can see this is a purely capacitive ranging shows a good capacitor behavior. For a good design, capacitor must work in this region as a good capacitor. If the frequency is above F0, it is no longer a capacitor. It is inductive region, and the capacitor now becomes an inductor, and we should never do that in our design. The second way is to use internal parameters to add ESR and ESL. This is a capture from LTSPICE wiki. You can see there are quite a few parameters we can define inside the capacitor model. The benefit is that the computational time will be smaller in LTSPICE. Now let's go to the capacitor model and the right click. We can add parameters such as ESR and the ESL. Benefit is it becomes computational better when parameters are defined inside the capacitor. However, the information about these two parameters are hidden inside the symbol, and you cannot see it from the schematic directly. Again, this is the body plot generated in AC analysis. This is the same result as before. We can say that these two methods are pretty equivalent. Please run LT spy simulation for practice. To recap, in this lecture, we talked about 
realistic model of a capacitor including ESR and ESL. We have studied two methods to run the LTSPI simulation. The first method defines the ESR and ESL using external components. The second method defines ESR and ESL inside the capacitor model. In your design, you have to make sure you choose the correct capacitor. The rule is simple. The capacitor should operate much below the resonant frequency. In other words, the capacitor should always work in the capacitive region, where the operating frequency is well below the self-resonant frequency. So that, in most cases, basic capacitor model is good for the simulation. Here are the reference for this lecture. Please take a look if you are interested. Thank you very much and see you next time.